Hey guys, so I literally just posted on Instagram? Yeah, Instagram. That I was gonna pick up my camera tomorrow and film some YouTube videos, but I want to talk about reverse dieting right freaking now. Plus also my cat. I will try to make this video short and sweet. No guarantees. Okay, so reverse dieting, if you're not familiar with what that is, is basically after a season of dieting where you diet down to get lean or whatever, um, you, whatever macros you end up at, you slowly start increasing those macros, primarily carbs and maybe fat, um, every week in like 10, 20 gram increments. Um, just so that you're slowly increasing your calories over time as opposed to jumping from like the bottom of your dieting calories, which might be 13 or 1400 calories up to maintenance, which could be, you know, 1800 or whatever. Um, Cause just jumping from 1400 to 1800 or 1900 or whatever um, can like kind of mess with your results and make you hold some water and stuff like that. So the purpose of res reverse dieting is to slowly increase your calories so that you don't have any fat or has have less fat gain um, and have less of a effect on your physique. So I ended my prep on like 30 grams of carbs. I went real low. I, I know before everybody like is all up in arms about low carb diets, let me just say I tried everything else and that was the only thing that worked for me. Um, also I was on like, I was on like 70 grams of fat, so like chill. I was eating <laughs> and I was at like 150 grams of protein. My show was six or seven weeks ago. I think it's seven weeks is Saturday. And since then, I have gone from 30 grams of carbs to 135. I think I hit 135 last week. I'm actually on kind of like a mini cut this week, which I'll explain later. Um, yeah. But yeah, right after my show, I went from 30 grams of carbs up to 80 grams. I just took a big leap because I didn't want to have to add 10 grams of carbs weekly from 30. Like, my God, I would never be eating normal amounts of carbs for, like, ages. And I dropped fats from 70 or 80, whatever I was at, to, like, 60. And I've actually been decreasing fats by, like, 2 grams a week to where I ended up at, I think, 50 grams. So as of last week, I was at 50, maybe 55 grams of fat. I can't remember. I love fats, so... Um, 55 grams of fat, 135 grams of carbs, and 150 grams of protein. Um, in terms of hunger, yeah, I've been a lot hungrier off prep than I was on prep. High fat diets tend to make me like not hungry at all, like at all. So for the last like six to eight weeks of my prep, I like just wasn't really hungry, which was great. And now lowering my fats and increasing my carbs. Carbs always seem to make me hungry. Um, in fact, I usually keep carbs in the lower half or the second half of my day because if I start my day with carbs, um, I will be hungry like 30 seconds later. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been increasing 10 or 15 grams per week, I want to say. My weight has stayed within, I was like 131 for my show. And since then, I think I've stayed between 135 and like 138. Like it's kind of moved around a lot. Um, because some days I've not been as consistent. It seems when I'm doing good though, like when I'm really truly sticking to my macros perfectly, I tend to be around 135.6. That seems to be my magic number, which is totally fine with me. I mean, that's four and a half pounds above stage weight, which is, uh, that's fine. Now, I had intended to not really have any cheat meals. I, going into my reverse diet, I thought like if an opportunity arose, like, um, birthday parties or family events or like my birthday. Um, I thought, yeah, I'm going to eat food cause I love food, but I thought outside of that, I'm just going to stick to my macros just so I have the best result. Um, and that's kind of been true. I would say though, about once a week, maybe once every other week, I've been having some sort of cheat meal and I really hate the word cheat meal. It's like, oh, it sounds like eating food is like a, a sin that we're committing against our bodies and I just don't like to think about food that way because food is amazing and it's it should not be considered a sin for the most part <laughs> and half the times my cheats would be small just like go out for froyo with my husband and like not buy a 20 ounce thing of froyo like try and keep it modest um pay attention and not like fill my cup with like high fat 
candy and stuff like that, which is obviously the fun candy, but I mean, you know. There's really only been, I think, two times where I had like a giant meal, which was at my, one was at my niece's birthday party. I had pizza and cookie cake, and I regret nothing at all. And the other one was, I don't know. Oh, I I um I went to a barbecue at with my friends from my real estate team, and it wasn't even like a mega overeating type of situation. But like I had potato chips and hot dogs, and I was like, wow, I'm so American, and this is awesome. And then I went and got froyo afterwards, cause froyo is also American, right? So yeah. And then after those cheat meals, any or any, oh, can we just stop calling them cheat meals? After these bouts of delicious food, um, usually what I would do is I would, the next day, if I did not hit legs really hard the day of that meal, I would hit legs hard the next day. And I would increase my cardio by like 20 or 30 minutes for like three or four days following these meals. And that seemed to do the trick for me. Usually by like day three or four, I was like feeling back to normal and stuff like that. Um, and I still would like increase my um, carbs that week if I was in the middle of like increasing my carbs or whatever when I had this meal, I would just be like, whatever, dude, I'm like, I'm not gonna like sit at the same macros for another week. Forget that. This is truly not an ideal setup though because I am trying to decrease cardio right now a lot. And um, if I were really interested in my metabolic health, I would probably not be doing the extra cardio after um, these big meals. Um, it's just not good for your metabolism to like, or your body to like train your body to think that every time you have a big meal, you're gonna like burn it all off with a ton of cardio. But then also at the end of the day, weight loss or weight gain is about calories in versus calories out. And for me, it's pretty simple. If I don't want to gain weight, uh, the cardio has to happen. So I'm trying to decrease the frequency of these meals. The last few weeks has gotten a little out of hand, like happening once a week, sometimes twice a week. <laughs> but uh, trying to decrease the frequency of these meals so that I'm not spending every Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday doing extra cardio to make up for what happened over the weekend. Um, and the only reason I do that cardio is, like I said, because I don't want to gain more weight. If I just like let those car uh, calories chill on my body, um, my metabolism is still so sensitive right now that I it would just like be weight gain. Like my body wouldn't just like figure it out and sort out the calories within a couple of days or anything, like, no, that would be fat, and I can, like, feel it on my body, um, so that's why I do the extra cardio, just to kind of balance it out, but like I said, that's not how reverse dieting's supposed to go, you're supposed to stick to your macros, like, perfectly, um, and six days a week of sticking to them perfectly is, like, nice, but that seventh day really should be perfect as well, so, um, I'm trying to implement a better plan to where I'm still eating stuff that I like. I'm like undressing on camera right now. Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, and it's nice because this has not too much been like an emotionally tumultuous, is that a word? Like the plural of turmoil or I didn't go to college. Okay. Tumultuous, tumult, tumult. I don't even know what I was saying now. This has not been emotionally taxing. I think that's what I was going for is that um, last year food was very, it caused a lot of mood swings and it caused a lot of self-hate and stuff like that. And I would feel guilty about food and I would feel upset with myself for eating. And like once I started overeating a little bit, it would like for sure lead into like an all or nothing mindset where I was like, I have to eat a bunch of crap. And like I said, a lot of these like overeating fun meals that I've had, the majority of them have just been like, I like will hit my macros for the day. And then at night I'll be like, dude, like let's get froyo. So we'll get like 400 calories worth of froyo, if even that. And that's it. Like it doesn't stress me out. I don't feel like, oh my God, we've ruined everything. We have to go get 50 more things of froyo. Um, and so I think that that's also what's helped me keep my weight low uh, post-show is that like these fun meals that I'm having are not like turning into binges. And that's good for physical reasons, um, it, but it's also for me been really good for my mental sanity because I did not want the post-show situation to turn into something unhealthy. I did not want to go back to old feelings of like 
just no balance with food and um, hating my body. And I can honestly say, I can honestly say that even when I've had like the huge meals where I can feel my body has like the next day or two, my body is holding so much water and it feels so full. And I know if I were to step on the scale, it would probably be up like six pounds or something. Even on those days, I've never looked at my body and been like, oh my God, like gross. Um, because I, I really have learned to accept my body and I'm very proud of it at this point, which is so weird because, you know, I, my body shape has changed so much because of the way I, that I work out and the way that I eat. Um, but primarily, it's kind of been the same over the last year or two um, in terms of like, I mean, I still have thick legs. I still have a thick back. I still have like thicker arms. I don't know. I'm muscular. I'm built like that. I'm not I'm not built like tiny or lean at all. Like I don't have a tiny waist. I don't have a tiny anything really. Um, and that used to bother the crap out of me. It would bother me so much. And I always just wanted to be tiny. And like, I just don't want that anymore. Like the body I have is awesome for me. It's not like, and it's not even that I have this like star quality physique, like in terms of like the bikini people of the world. Um, I am not lucky. You guys, like, I'm not naturally lean. I do not naturally have, like, a tiny waist or an hourglass figure. And like I said, that's the kind of stuff that used to bother me so much. And now I'm just like, eh. And that's important. Just, I mean, for me, it's been important in just not losing my sanity and, and I don't know, not letting the food stuff overwhelm me because it's when all the overwhelming emotions come and you feel fat, you feel like you failed yourself, you feel like you're not disciplined, you don't have any self-control. I think that it all just is like a perfect storm to create some seriously messed up emotional issues and, and lead to things like binge eating and whatever. So I'm happy to say that that's not been a problem for me at all at all. Um, and the main thing I really just want to keep working on is like sticking to my reverse diet a little bit better so that only for my health because I don't want to keep doing cardio, extra cardio and never get my cardio down because for my next prep, um, if I don't get cardio down low, like if I don't start decreasing cardio now, for my next prep I'm going to have to start right out the gates with a ton of cardio just to lose weight because my body's so used to tons of cardio. So that's really the only reason that I want to kind of like minimize these fun meals. But I love food, you guys. Like, I love food. So, we'll see what happens. I might be willing to sacrifice. No, no, Lynette. Cardio, excess cardio is not good for you. French fries are good, though. So, yeah. And right now I'm on a mini cut because last week I had, like, two or three days in a row where, like, I just didn't eat right. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't binging. It wasn't like emotional eating. It was literally like I ate out with my company. Um, and then the next day I did an open house and the girl I did an open house with brought freaking cookies. Like, are you joking me? I like made the decision then and there. I was like, I'm eating a ton of these. So I did. <laughs> and it was, again, it wasn't like emotional eating or binging. It was like, I freaking love cookies and I want cookies and it's worth extra cardio tonight. So like that was two days in a row of like overeating. And then like two days later, I think I went out with my husband and we ordered like stuff that was going to fit my macros. And then I like just saw some other stuff I wanted and it didn't fit my macros. And again, this is all stuff that in the past would like make me super, super upset. And I'll, I'll be honest, it, after that third bad meal in like a matter of a couple of days, I was a little bit upset with myself. Like I was like, Lynette, like you have stuff that you've got to do and you need to like get it together because you're going to gain back 10 pounds in a very short period of time if you do not like rein in this a little bit. So um, and having three bad days in a row, again, because my metabolism is so sensitive, I felt like super puffy and watery. Um, and it's not that I didn't like my body. It's just that I knew if I didn't kind of brush off some of this weight and like water weight, fat, whatever you want to call it, that um, I would uh, I would just keep gaining weight as I continue to reverse my diet. So right now I'm on a mini cut. I'm just at like about 100 grams of carbs per day and I cut my fats from 50 to, or from 55 to 50 um, and I'm just doing it for six days, honestly, just to get a little bit more comfortable with my physique and then I'm hopping right back up to 135 on, 135 carbs on Thursday. And then by Sunday, I'm just going to bump myself to 145 because I'm the boss, applesauce. So there's your update. Done completely in my bedroom. 
on my phone. I'm not editing this. It's, uh, yeah. Just, if there's anything you wanted to add, Mia. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that that cleared up some of your questions, and maybe, I don't know. I hope that that was good. Okay, bye.